This video will discuss when substitution occurs at the carbonyl. Right off the bat, aldehydes have a hydrogen leaving group and ketones have a carbon-based leaving group. So therefore, if the leaving group was to leave, you would end up with a hydride or a carbanion. As both of those are terrible leaving groups, substitution does not occur with them. Now let's look at other carbonyl species. We have acid chlorides, acid anhydrides, carboxylic acids, esters, and amides. The corresponding leaving groups are a chloride, a carboxylate, a hydroxide, an alkoxide, and an amide anion. Although all of these are not good leaving groups for SN2 chemistry, for example, they may work in carbonyl chemistry as the rate determining step is the addition step. The question becomes, what effects do we need to focus on to know the reactivity of the carbonyl? Well, there are three different effects to focus on. First, there's the steric effect. Uh, this is just the fact that bulkiness slows down a reaction as your nucleophile is less able to approach the carbonyl. Second is the inductive effect. So when you have an electron withdrawing group, it makes the carbonyl more electrophilic and therefore increases the rate of the reaction. Whilst if you have an electron donating group, it slows down the rate of the reaction. The third is the resonance effect. Now, if you have a electron withdrawing group with, with respect to resonance, you will have a faster rate, whilst if you have an electron donating group with resonance, it will be a slower rate. When you put all of that together, you get the following order of reactivity of all the carbonyls. You might notice that aldehyde and ketone are about in the middle, or even slightly more reactive than some of the other compounds that we do know have substitution occur in them. So this is just a reminder that even though it might be more reactive, the substitution itself still overall depends on what the leaving group is.